This patient has now had five years of an astrazole, and unfortunately, she's developed metastatic disease in her liver in spite of taking her anastrozole for five years. So certainly we want to move away from the aromatase inhibitor family. We wouldn't want to continue the aromatase inhibitor or change to a different one and then add a CDK4-6 inhibitor because we have now vast data for exactly this patient population. If a woman's disease is progressing or recurring on an aromatase inhibitor, if she switches to fulvestrant with a CDK4-6 inhibitor, she will really get substantial benefit. The Falcon data were very important data, and I really like it because it was a head-to-head -head comparison of fulvestrant versus anastrozole in a completely hormonal therapy naive population. So a very pure comparison of what is our most effective endocrine therapy, and the answer is fulvestrant. In the overall treated population, the fulvestrin had a superior progression-free survival than an astrozole. However, that is a very specific patient population, a completely endocrine therapy naive population. So our patient here has been pretreated with an astrozole, and her breast cancer has recurred in spite of the anastrozole, so she doesn't fit the falcon study population, and that is fulvestrin by itself. And truthfully, now that we have the great data with the CDK4-6 inhibitors, we won't be using fulvestrin very often in the first-line setting by itself. There may be the occasional patient with small volume, asymptomatic metastatic breast cancer that's estrogen receptor positive, that's endocrine therapy sensitive, not endocrine therapy sensitive and endocrine therapy naive, who lives a great distance from the cancer center or who has other substantial comorbidities where it wouldn't be in the patient's best interest to get a CDK4-6 inhibitor. And so that patient may be an appropriate candidate for fulvestrant alone. However, that's a very um, rare patient population. Um, and I think the, the advantage of the Falcon trial is that it showed us the power of fulvestrant. And that's why the Mona Lisa 3 data are very interesting because it brings the fulvestrant into the first line with ribocyclib and really does show excellent efficacy. I think giving physicians the opportunity to utilize fulvestrin first line with ribocyclib if they, if they so choose. So it's very likely that this woman is going to go on to treatment with fulvestrin and one of the CDK4-6 inhibitors. And truthfully, it's very likely that she's going to benefit from that because the CDK4-6 inhibitors have had about a 70-80% chance of being beneficial with regard to either a response or clinical benefit uh, in the metastatic population who has never had a CDK4-6 inhibitor before. Unfortunately, it's very likely that eventually she will have progression of disease on the CDK4-6 inhibitor with fulvestrant. Today, we have very little data as to what to do for that patient afterwards from the point of view of randomized clinical trials. We've just had very important data come out at ESMO with regard to the SOLAR-1 trial that's going to change practice because it showed that in the approximate 35 to 40 percent of ER positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer patients, there will be a PIK3CA somatic mutation in the breast cancer. And those patients will get substantial benefit with regard to progression-free survival having alpelacib, the oral inhibitor of the PI3 kinase, added to endocrine therapy. In the SOLAR-1 trial, it was fulvestrant. So one option for this patient, if she's found to have a PI3 kinase mutation, is to potentially continue on the fulvestrant and have the alpelacib added. Now, there was only 6% of patients in the SOLAR-1 trial that had had a prior CDK4-6 inhibitor. They benefited equally from the alpelacib compared to patients who had not had a prior CDK4-6 inhibitor, but the number of patients was indeed very small. I will tell you, I would be looking for a PI3 kinase mutation in this patient, no question about it. I would also be comfortable if she had a slow progression uh, after the CDK4-6 inhibitor and was asymptomatic. I would be very comfortable with a trial of everolimus for her with eximestane. If she had rapid progression in her liver, combined with other sites of metastasis progressing as well, I would then probably favor capecitabine for her. But I think the important new information here is from the SOLAR-1, 
with the PI3 kinase mutant population, which is 35 to 40 percent of patients such as this, ER positive, HER2 negative, having a PIK3CA mutation. So I think it's going to be important that we look for those mutations and consider alpelicid for that patient.